Don, in trying to understand what reality is, one of the ways I try to, try to handle it is to say, of all the things I can think about, I can, I can, we can list millions of different things, what's the smallest numbers of categories to encompass everything, but yet not combine things that are of so totally different character they have no relationship, that have sufficiently different characters? So what are the kinds of things that you would put in the categories of all existence? Well, I suppose the primary division I might put is, is between logical truths in the Platonic world and concrete things. Okay. Then within concrete things, I'd put first God and then what he created. So that I've got that okay. divided into two parts. Okay. And then what he's created, I would put that our universe or multiverse and whatever else he may have created that I don't know much, I don't know much about. Maybe the afterlife is part of that or whatever. And then if I wanted to take with our universe, then, then I might say it has three parts. It has the dynamical laws of physics, it has the quantum state, and it has the rules for getting the, pro well, it has observations, and it has the rules for getting the probabilities of observations from, from the quantum state. So I gotta have this hierarchy. I gotta have concrete ver versus abstract, and yeah. then within the concrete I have God, and all that God's created. Within mm -hmm. God and all that's created, it's our universe or multiverse, uh, and other things that I don't, I know very little. Well, for about. example, what, what might there be? Uh, you know, where where are angels? Do you believe in the Bible and the Bible? Talks yeah, so about I angels? suppose angels would be. Yeah, angels, I guess, would be other created things in a hev heavenly realm that would be apart from our universe. So that, okay. that right, that could be, that could be part of uh, of other things that, right, that God so, created. So, so we we have uh, uh, concrete and abstract things, concrete things, God and God's creation, and then under God's creation we have. The physical world, uh, right. uh, which could multiverse and all the right. complexity of, of many, many worlds, and then uh, other things that God created that are not physical, not, right. of, uh, not of what we call the physical world. And, right. and I, I'm throwing in there angels and things in the heavenly realm. I don't know what else is in that category. Yeah, well, right? I don't know whether the, a I mean, I suppose the afterlife, I suspect the afterlife is not governed by the same laws of physics that govern our universe or multiverse. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I, okay. but I suspect that. So, so that the might afterlife might else. go in either category. We're not quite sure whether God shifts categories. We're in, you and I are in this one, and if, and, and if you and I are in the afterlife, I hope I'm there with you. Uh, God may have a new law of physics, but he, he may shift us into the, the non-physical afterlife. So we, we don't know which sure. category we're going to be in at that time. Yeah, I mean, right. I guess That's I tend fair. to think of, I mean, I do believe more in resurrection than in, 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 right. in of, of a disembodied Soul. So, so okay. I think in some sense it's physical, but I, but it might be different physical. I mean, it might be laws okay. that are different from even anywhere in the in the in the multiverse that we that we have. Uh, okay, that's fine. So that may be a, the the category of the heavenly things that God has now, or maybe a third category that God will wait for the resurrection. That's a new category. Right, God right. can create new categories, just like new universe. That's pretty easy. Okay, so now let's talk about the physical universe. You listed three areas, three three divisions which had a, a, a quantum aspects to them. Is that the only way to think about the physical world? Is through those three quantum-related elements that, that would indicate that your belief that quantum physics is the foundations of, the final foundations of the physical world. Well, certainly I think people may have different ideas and of course how you divide it up. I mean, there's, nowadays there, there tends to be a very negative reaction against dualism and at, at the present level of description, I tend to be putting conscious perceptions at a different category than the quantum state and the dynamical laws. But the whole thing, maybe that you know, hopefully there's more uh, some more unified picture that they're not as separate as they as, as they may seem to be. Because after all, these categories are not completely separate. Because I mean, if God creates the universe, there is it, God and the universe. I mean, in one sense, they are separate. God's created something separate from Himself. But on the other hand, we have our complete dependence upon God, right. and so therefore, in another sense, we're not independent of God. Right. So I did want to ask you about consciousness. Where does right. consciousness come in? Most neuroscientists, of course, would have consciousness as being the pure product of the physical world. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be its own category? It would be a a, a a far down derivative within the physical category, not worth making a big category over. Other people would have consciousness being a huge category. Some people would have consciousness being a category instead of God. Well, I, it, you could say it's, you know, it's a property of matter under certain conditions, and in that sense you could just say it's one of the properties. Right. But I, I do see it as a property that's not contained logically in the present description of physics as dynamical laws and the, the quantum state. It, it, I don't see how to, how to derive logically from any of the present laws of physics the fact that I'm conscious of talking with you, but I'm not presently conscious of my heartbeat, even though there's information about both, right. presumably, being stored in my brain. So I think at the present level of understanding, I, I think it doesn't help to say it's all just one of the same thing, because 
you just don't have a clear, I mean, it, it seems to be better to say that, well, we do have some ideas about the quantum state. We do have some ideas about the dynamical evolution of it. And the, the, the consciousness and the rules for consciousness, they don't follow logically from this part. Right. And so I think at the present, it seems better to, re, to regard it as something that looks presently different. I'm not ruling out that once we have this, this separate understanding, maybe we can unify them. You know, maybe we can find a more unified... So that third category is what? Well, the, okay, so the one was the dynamical laws of physics, how right. things change in time. Right. The second was the, the quantum initial, state of the universe. The it's like the initial conditions. conditions. Right. And, the, and, the, and the third was the, well, was the consciousness and how it's connected uh -huh. to the other parts. Uh -huh. So in other words, I could imagine another universe that God might have created with exactly the same quantum state and exactly the same dynamical laws, but that just doesn't have no, have no consciousness. Right. Now, some others cannot. I mean, Christoph Koch, I was just talking to <laughs> yesterday and today, he doesn't believe it's even possible to have another world in which there's the same quantum physics without consciousness. Right, because consciousness and, is, 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 is a product of the integrated information in that case. Uh, and so you, it's, it's impossible to have a so-called zombie, which every, has all the exact characteristics of, of what we do, but doesn't have an inner experience. See, it may be impossible if you give an, the, the complete properties of matter, which we don't understand now. But I'm just saying the properties we've captured by the dynamical laws and, and, the, and the initial conditions of the form we have now, those, it just doesn't seem that those logically derive, that you can logically conclude the other from that. So at the present level, it doesn't seem to be in there. I've, I've sometimes, I made a remark to John Searle, he, he talks about syntax and semantics, that it seemed to me that the present laws of physics, that, that is the dynamical laws in the quantum state, seem to be like syntax. It's like the grammar, it's structure, it's order, it's relationships, but it doesn't really tell you what the ontology is. And it seems to be the conscious perceptions is more the semantics. It's the, re, it's the, it, it's the meaning. It, it's what we experience. And it, so it seems to be sort of in a different category from the, the, the parts that we've discussed in physics. Though, of course, the physical matter may have all of these properties. It may be, you know, that the, it, they're just different descriptions of different aspects of the reality. So I'm not necessarily saying that the physical reality is dualistic. But I, I am saying that at the present level of description, we have different ways of describing it. And it seems to be that dynamical laws and the quantum state are one way of describing it. That way of describing it, even if we made it complete, would not logically uh, imply the other description in terms of consciousness. And, and simply vice versa, consciousness would not could logically exist independently of a, of a, of a quantum world. It could just, we could just have the conscious. There could just be the conscious perceptions. But in our world, it, we believe that, it, that, that somehow they go together. There's a, so I think they all go together, but at the present level, I think it helps to think of them as, as present different categories under a present description.